sound hose it's got sort of vintage looking stuff on it like vintage tuners um, long saddle here on the bridge that sort of thing my job was to just make it sound better and do some things to it um, did the frets I did a nut I did the popsicle brace I shaved the rear back braces down I fixed the saddle because it had a super 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 low action I put a new saddle in it put water buffalo bridge pins water buffalo horn bridge pins now obviously not little water buffaloes the water buffalo horn um they're kind of bright sounding pins i haven't used these in a long time so the large sound hole the pins some of that stuff makes it a brighter guitar the back braces make it a little bit basser it's a pretty well balanced guitar i think i did a pick guard on it and i put a k and k pickup in it I don't get a whole lot of LSVs in. You know, I've had a few. They, they, they come through every now and then. It's not a rare guitar. It's just um, kind of an uncommonish one, if you will. This one looks like it has a Sitka top. No, that might be red spruce. I bet that's a red spruce top. I take that back. Given the little racing stripes right here on the top. See the racing stripes? They made them with, with uh, red spruce for a while, and then they um, quit and went to a Sitka top. And so this one, yeah, I take that back. That's probably a red spruce. I don't know for certain. I have to check the serial numbers to see. What's making me hesitate, it's got a lot of silking on it, which I don't normally see in red spruce. But then it's got the racing stripes back here, which I don't normally see in Sitka. So who knows? I'll have to check the uh, serial number to find out what it is. Sounds good. Got, they've got good necks on them. The LSVs have kind of a, uh, have a pretty chunky neck. they uh, pretty fat up here in the first couple of frets. Um, I played maybe one or two that were noticeably slimmer, and I could feel the taper. I could very easily get used to this neck. You know, coming off of these two Gibsons that I recorded earlier today, it, it feels massive. But it's also pretty comfortable, and it wouldn't take me long to get, get used to it again. It's got a V on it which I like. It's bigger than the GE neck, than GE um, D18 Golden Air. That's my favorite neck of all time, of Martin neck. This neck has got more V to it, and it's got a little bit more, uh, because of the binding, it's got a flat surface up here, whereas the D18 GE feels more, a little bit more rounder to me. This is a good neck though. And like I said, you know, wouldn't take long to get used to this at all. So, this particular guitar has got a very tall saddle on it, right here. As you can see, that is a tall saddle. Nothing I can do about that. It's not too tall, but it just means that the neck has got a, is set back pretty far from the factory. Um, I'm letting it settle in, and it might be that I can lower the axle a little bit more and get that saddle down a bit, but it is what it is. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I just notice and commenting on the fact that it's a tall saddle. I have to have things to say 
in these videos, and that's one of these things I'm going to say, is that this guitar is a tall saddle. So, it's kind of appropriate, you know, of course, this is modeled after Clarence White's guitar, and of course, here I am in my Clarence t-shirt today, so I think it's pretty appropriate to be playing this guitar. Tony's, Tony Rice is the guy that really made the, the large sound hole. You know, this is a this is Martin's Tony Rice guitar. They can't use the name and all that, but and then of course they make the Clarence White signature model, which is just like the LSV, but it has a, a skinnier neck. This is a one and three quarter inch neck. The Clarence White model has a one and eleven sixteenths inch neck. And um, I've played quite a few Clarence Whites. They're pretty good. I like them. I like large sound holes in general. I feel like large sound hole um, projects more sound up to me as a player. It throws the sound in a wider arc, it seems, this way. People standing to the side of you over here, the microphone, um, pick up more of the sound than they do with the smaller sound hole. It increases the trebles and mid-ranges a little bit, which is not a bad thing on a Martin guitar, in my humble opinion. Makes them cut a little bit better. And... I don't have any downside whatsoever with the large sound hole. I like them. So I like the LSVs. I like Clarence Whites. I like Collings Clarence Whites. I like the large sound hole guitars. So let's see if I can think of something else to play. No, I can't. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>